good day, tubes. How's she hanging? Pretty good here and stuff. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of moving blankets here that uh, come with the Ford tractor there. But uh, they should uh, probably change their name on those caps from Lear to Leak. The guy even told me when I uh, when he installed it, oh, these things aren't 100% waterproof, you know, this is going to leak. I'm like, really? My other one never leaked at all. <laughs> it was perfectly good on my uh, GM there. But, oh yeah, this one leaks. Might as well not even have a cap on it. All this is maybe keep a little bit of the fluffy snow off everything, but holy. <laughs> so, yeah, if I park on like, like an angle where the box is like sloping forward, Oh yeah, it'll be full of water <laughs> if it rains good. So I don't know why they've put the rubber, you know, foamy rubber stuff around the perimeter of the bed of the truck, but it didn't seem to do anything. So I might have taken it. Let's just lift it off, pour some silicone to her, drop her down, let her set, and then she'd be good. But uh, it'd be a real nightmare trying to ever get it off again. So anyways, we're gonna have to dry these mats out a little bit. They're not like drenched, 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 but they're, uh, you know, that little spot's kind of dampish and uh, the odd spot's a little soaky, soaky-ish. So I'll uh, maybe just drape them up over the, the dewy here for now and then they'll, uh, they'll dry off. There, let those dry out for a day or so, whatever, maybe a couple of days, few days. Probably until I need this tractor next. Um, <laughs> and we'll uh, cover up the uh, the old 8N here again. Um, I want to do an oil change on this. And there's a couple of spots I want to have a look at on the uh, hydraulic area. A couple of plugs that are just, you know, they're wet on the bottom and stuff. I wouldn't mind maybe having a look at. See, uh... What's, I'd like it to not be dripping at all. So I might have to um, take off some of them cover plates and stuff and uh, figure out where it's seeping or weeping from. Maybe they just need a little tighten. Some of them, maybe they've just, you know, he's redone it all 20 odd years ago, but now it's sat and it's ran a few times and maybe a bit of the vibrations have just kind of you know, soften the uh, the gaskets a little bit, which, you know, the bolts are the same tightness, but the gaskets have squished, we'll say, well, compressed a bit, and uh, now there's still, there's a little bit of a gap there now, right, so we need to uh, figure that out, and uh, could actually almost maybe use a little bit of a wash, too, here and there, it's got a, some settled areas where some of the grime is settled, you know, and stuff, and if you don't kind of keep that somewhat cleaned up, it'll eventually get a layer there and then you'll get like a crustacean of goo right so probably wouldn't be a super bad idea even to get give a little wash um you know it's just got normal surface dust on it from sitting too so that'll get rid of that too you could wipe it all but my goodness you take all day to wipe all this so you need to kind of hit it with a little bit of a pressure system heated pressure system would be better for that oily grimy stuff but it looks to me like some of this grind back here has probably come out of this area here where the brake rod goes through there <clears throat> it probably leaked a bit out of that area so there's that parking pole I was telling you about the other day where you have to push your push your brake down then you gotta reach down in behind you and pull that this little guy here into these teeth and then that locks your brakes on now he's got that sweet handle thing up there that does it kind of for you so way more better idea but uh, yeah, anyway, so I, ch I want to change the oil on this too, and uh, I don't know if I'll get to it today or not, but um, and then have a look at these plugs and stuff under here and see uh, what's doing, what, where, and what needs kind of looked at and stuff. Um, today, actually, well, tomorrow, uh, some of his uh, buddies and stuff have arranged a plow day. Now, I'm not going to take this because um, it's not kind of really meant for that. Um, this uh, axle wouldn't flex enough because he's got a, a big limiter on it so it doesn't tear off these uh, tubes and pipes here for the uh, 
from the engine to the, because uh, it comes right out of the engine at the front there, you gotta have to go and run it straight through <laughs> to the radiator. So if you put too much axle flexing in that on the front axle bar here, you'll end up tearing that off and then, then you're into a lot of crap. So this is street, strictly street stuff only now, <laughs> unless that radiator was changed and you could go up and then, you know, have a little more clearance because this type of radiator he's got in here fits nice under the hood and stuff, but it's got to fit there, but the way it's piped, it's the way she is, so, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, no uh, no more field for this guy, unfortunately. That's uh, show tractor only now, so, but uh, that's all right, no, no big deal. So, um, yeah, we should uh, probably do a nice little cold start on this thing. Where the heck did I put my... Uh, I gotta see what time it is. I gotta meet a lady soon. Oh, we got a little bit of time here. Okay. Well, let's get you on a tripod. Maybe we'll do a grimy old cold start. I wouldn't mind doing a cold start when it gets really cold. I'll maybe leave it out one night and let it do a cold start. But, pardon me, let's get a tripod and fire it up. Okay. I'm gonna maybe place back just a hair more here. Just so you can see this top of the stacks. Uh, there was one comment, I think, the other day on this video. Oh, why would you have two stacks on it? That makes it look stupid. Why wouldn't you just run it out the back like normal? Well, when you have a V8 engine in it, why would you do that? I mean, sure, yeah, you could. But that is, I'll tell you, a freaking... What do you call it? Uh, hmm. Can't think of the proper name. Showstopper, we'll say. Showstopper when you're, you know, and it's kind of cold out and you're in a parade and these things are like, you know, puffing out and behind you. Oh, it's pretty sweet looking. I haven't really shown you guys too much of that yet because it hasn't really been cold enough, but it's pretty cool. So that's why it's got stacks and not just run at the back like stock. Because stock sucks. Friends don't let friends run stock. That's what they say. Okay. quite cool yet. It hasn't, of course, warmed up to uh, temperature yet. Still nice and cold. It's a big block of, block of metal there to warm up, I'll tell you. Big block of metal. Yeah. Running not too bad, too. Kind of interesting to pull plugs and have a look at them and see what they're doing. I think it's running pretty good, actually. She's got her tune pretty nice here, so... Yeah. And he's got the uh, pipes drilled, little drain hole in the bottom. You can see the water dripping there now. Just a little bit of a drain hole there. 
just so it doesn't collect on the bottom and then rot the pipe out, which it could. So you gave it a good and then she turned it all over you. But so that's pretty sweet. Got about half a tank of fuel in her, that's good. That should be pretty awesome. There's a little bit of the moisture there. Uh, when it's really cold, uh, like winter time-ish, and you're driving around, it's pretty cool. It leaves quite a swirly, swirly. So that's running pretty low there now. That's running, oh, one, two, three, fifty, maybe. About as low as she'll go there. Pretty sweet. Starting to get warm now. Cool. That's just starting to get warm there too. Oh well, I'm gonna turn the shutter off. I think. Pretty how fast it shuts off. Blah. <laughs> it's like instantly blah. Done. Anyways, uh, I mentioned about Plow Day. There, they've set up a Plow Day. We have to actually go pick up the. The uh, Jubilee, he does still own the Jubilee tractor and his plow for it. Uh, two bottom plow, I've got one here too. It's sitting over there on that skid. It's kind of been out in the rusty stuff, so it's all rusty now, but um, it's up off the dirt. So it's not gonna rot things off like if it was sitting in the dirt. So uh, got a buddy that wants to do his, well it was where a barn was and it's all dirt and crappy stuff he says no I just want to kind of level it off so he's coming to get that sometime actually the vault guy that um, works for the vault company he's coming to get that and he's got a John Deere green John Deere tractor a little bit bigger than what I got here so he's gonna hook that onto that and then run that around and chop everything up again so uh, but yes uh, so we have to go pick up the Jubilee and uh, he hasn't had it going for maybe three years <laughs> where it's been sitting in storage so hopefully it fires up um, might be interesting but we'll maybe take you along with with us on that if I can get to go um, I gotta meet a lady here at 9 and then some other people at 11 and I think he was going at 1130 so hopefully I can make it with him uh, to go with him so if not well we'll have a look at it when he brings it back he's gonna bring it here tonight and leave it over here tonight and then uh, go plowing with it tomorrow apparently so Hopefully I can get to Plow Day too, because that would be fun. I haven't done one of those for a while. And uh, I might even take the drone out there and, uh, you know, do some droning, drone footage of the plowing. That would be pretty sweet. And right over top of, you know, I think that would be pretty cool. So we'll see what we can do with that. And, uh, yeah, but i got to meet these people. And then uh, hopefully I can catch the bus out of here <laughs> kind of thing. We'll go pick up the Jubilee and hook on the plow. The plow's probably still hooked to it. Maybe. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll bring her back here and then uh, we'll have a look at it too. That's still got the stock, everything stock on it still, so it um, doesn't have horsepower like this thing does. It's it's just got like the four-cylinder stock engine in it. It's got a little more horsepower than the eight ends did, I think, though. I think it was more like 30-odd horse or something like that. For the stock ones, I think were 24-ish, 25-ish, somewhere in around there. So... Yeah, we'll go get that, and then uh, hopefully, like I say, I can make the bus. Okay, I just printed off the online manual of the 40 n tractor. Courtesy of my tractorforum.com. And uh, notice the number 372950-M. Uh, stupid me didn't realize that, you know, I'm halfway through it. I'm like, crap, I could have done this two-sided. Wow! Too late. <laughs> so, yeah. We uh, we didn't do a two-sided thing, so that's alright. So I'm going to get a binder for it, but I think for temporary things, just to keep it all together, I'm going to just do like this. And uh, uh, I don't have a binder here, so I have to get one. That'll keep the pages a little more protected. Yeah, stupid me. Duh. I could have so, like, you know, printed on both sides of the page and have half the thickness. 128 pages versus 64 pages would have been alright. 
But I actually just started it going to print, and uh, I didn't uh, I didn't get back right away. And uh, by that time, it had pretty much half of it already all done. So I'm like, crap! Didn't even think about that. Oh well. Not like it would have saved ink, but it would have saved paper. A little bit of paper. Well. We lost half a tree because I didn't print it on two pages. I'm sorry. Oh, God. I print both sides on one page. So, anyways, sh sh sue me. <laughs> so, this is just like probably not going to be super temporary, but whenever I'm out somewhere, I'm like, oh, I need a binder. Actually, I need two binders. I need another binder for, uh, I need another binder for my uh, cemetery book as well. But this will hold her for now. And it looks more authentic if you think of, you know, like tractor manual and it's held together by wire. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So now we should be able to look through our manual, go through pretty much everything in here. One thing I was quite surprised that wasn't in this manual, unless I missed it, was capacities. How much hydraulic oil does it hold? How much engine oil does it hold? I was really like, wow, it doesn't actually tell you specifications on stuff like that. It shows you how to hook up a plow and how to plow, and I'm like, huh, okay, but it doesn't give you, you know, any, it does it like adjustments and stuff, and oh, this is your three-point hitch, left arm here, control lever, but it doesn't actually give you like specifications of, there's some measurements here, but it doesn't give you specs on doing a valve job. Doesn't give you specs on how much oil it holds and stuff, so it's like, oh, okay. I know it's five gallons of hydraulic and about six liters, roughly. Well, this engine's a little different, but about six liters, I think he told me, on uh, of uh, engine oil. So, anyways. Oh, there it is. I thought the plow would still be attached to it. Right at a rock. Right at a rock. Nice. It's all greased up too. Not rusty like mine went from being outside. I should have done that, I guess, too. So this is a what year? 1953. 53. Golden Jubilee. Golden Jubilee, yes. The nicer hood, see? Yeah, take a look at that. A nicey, nicer hood. So it's been a while since it started? Uh, sometime in July. Oh, not too bad then. Shh. Might go up pretty good then. Has some? It's just got, that flash got a match? On. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just check it once. Yeah, that's all we need. If it flames up, we're good. <laughs> Does it smell all right? Yeah, it smells like gas. Yeah, it's good gas. It's yeah. Just in there. So it's July. Oh, I can't see down there. Oh, I got my. Uh... I'm trying to get my new. I got my. Uh... Cell phone light. Yeah, that might work. Oh yeah, there's some in there. Yeah, I'm gonna fill her up. Should be. Once I get motored. Should be good. Yep. To get her loaded on the trailer anyway, should be good. Yeah, yeah. Lots of, lots of oil. Good. Thick and black, just like how we liked it. Yeah. Got an axle seal leaking maybe here or something, eh? Well, it might be, yeah. It's all grimy down the wheel. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm mm. Mm mm. Maybe it'll get looked after over winter. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully the battery's good. That's got the toolbox and the running board that always rotted out, right? Not usually what happened with them. They rotted through the bottom. No, no, we drilled those holes. Drilled the holes to keep it from rotting, but that's usually what happened with they rot a hole through it. 
why they never thought that would do that. <laughs> it's funny when they were building these. May not. Battery may be down. We'll see what kind. Hopefully. Oh no. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, we got a big John Deere tractor sitting here. We could uh, pull start it. Maybe. Darn it. Oh, man. So, it's under here, isn't it? It's in the back. No, you can get it. Around the side or something. I can't remember. Oh, this side. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's your uh, negative side over here. Positive. Pod is it? Pop, pop, is positive? Yeah, we can get there. On that side. Oh, yeah. You have a van, okay. you say. I didn't bring it, though. Mm. You said you had cables and yeah, charger. We didn't bring my truck. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, crap. We might have to pull start it now. <laughs> He's left a key in that. <laughs> oh, crap. I didn't load it because... Oh, yeah. Well, okay. We're not super, super coordinated today. <laughs> oh, crap. We won't be able to get it out of here, though. Darn it. Turning over enough. Oh man! Darn it. Okay. Take two. A minute or two. Okay, now we're organized. Maybe. Hopefully the battery's not dead. I think it's okay. Positive and ground it to a. Oh. That's backwards. Oh. Battery's good. Yeah. That's your positive. Is that one on your battery? Yeah, I had that one on the on the battery. No. Oh. That was on your starter. You could put that on your, on your battery. The negative on, on a bolt somewhere. Can we get the positive from the top here? Yeah, put that right to the battery. On your battery starting a Ford tractor. Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. Just like downtown. cylinder is warming up here. This guy where we store this thing, he's pretty much got every plow that was ever available. Here's one of those disc plows I wanted to show you. Look at the size of these plates on here. Holy crap. It's got to be 24 inch anyways. Two of them. And they just kind of cut in and plow it over. Pretty sweet, really. A little single guy there. That's an angling plow here, I believe. Yeah, that one angles. Pretty sweet. Let him get wiggled out of there. There's a three bottom plow. Another big three bottom here. So I've got them all covered up. I'm not gonna take the covers off, but another big 
two plow, another big two bottom, another big two bottom. That's a different one here. Look at this one with the little winglet thingies. These are all Ferguson, Ferguson plows and some Ford plows. Kind of sweet, eh? Nice little collection he's got here. And a great big single one of the man that bottom's huge on there. Holy jeez. These are both singles here actually. Pretty sweet. I've got one back there, sort of like this one. This guy here, 12 inch flat bottoms. Slat bottom, sorry. So pretty sweet, nice little collection he's got here. I don't know why he needs so many plows when he never uses them, but it's a collection, right? It's pretty sweet. over there too. I got one at home like this, like that guy, but uh, I don't generally use it too much. He's got a nice John Deere tractor sitting here. I don't know if he owns it. It's used to be a farm, but he's retired now. He's sold everything off. So. A nice 2555 open cab. There we go. Free. Lift your plow up. Free and start plowing in his front yard. <laughs> he wouldn't probably like that too much. So we got a loader onto the trailer, tire down, and it'd be super awesome. Heavy tractor going on my trailer. Good. Whoa, that's good. Oh, lovely. Okay, don't shut her off. We'll get loaded up here, tied down, and we'll head her home. Alrighty, we are loaded, tied down, ready to rock. Love these mirrors. Let me see what's going on back there. Sweet. All right, head her home. Well, we made her home. Sounds like a little bit of an exhaust leak somewhere. I think they all sort of sounded like that, though. Probably with in here. Or sounds like it's here going into the muffler, maybe. It's a little wee bit of gasket missing, I guess, and then it starts hissing and puffing and stuff, so... We're gonna hook up a trickle charger to it overnight, so she's good. Uh, good for tomorrow for plow day. And as you can see, the plow is still attached, and it looks like she's good to go. Hard to find a good plow nowadays too. That's all not wore out. This one's this one's pretty good. Pretty good plow here. So these things, these things here that wear out. Should be more to a point there, and then these more mold boards wear out too on the back sides. Go around and have a look. And these ones usually they get really thin and really like razor sharp from all the stuff pouring off it, right? These are pretty good, yeah. Really good actually. So should get a bit of wear tomorrow. Right back here they get really thin, sharp. Let's go check out my other one here and see how they look I can't remember now but this one's of course sat outside and I did have it coated with like some fluid film but I guess it's washed off over the years so yeah see this how it's getting thin down here and that one over there is probably not quite so bad but they do get thin over time but this one has better points on it got more of a sharper point to the front 
may get wore off because that takes a lot of abrasion there. A lot of abrasion. I should probably be doing something with this soon though to uh, make sure it doesn't seize her right up on me because then you got a big job of getting her back together. But it's an original Dearborn, this one. It's pretty sweet. Alrighty, so we noticed uh, when we had that thing running out uh, at the farm there, or his friend's farm there, that uh, where it was stored, uh, that one of the plugs was bubbling. So we're like, hmm, it's not so good. So we got home, have a look at it. Um, they're all pretty crubbed up, so I've got them sitting in some super clean here, just kind of dissolving the crap. You can see it's working. It's working pretty good, so. Could have probably just got four new ones to throw four new ones in, but anyways, I thought, well, no, I'll we'll just clean them and should be good. But we uh, started it there and had it running the whole way home. Oh, 15 minute ride, maybe. It was sitting on the trailer here and, you know, we're doing stuff on it run. And uh, it didn't, uh, he shut it off and then it was just like, whoa, 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 again. So it's like, oh, well, that's not good. So we put a, a charger on here. Wicked Smart Chargers, that's one of his Deweys. And it looks like it's already up to 75%. That's weird. So yeah, so I'm just cleaning plugs and we're letting this charge. I might try starting her again here just before um, before I go for the day, just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, but sure enough, that battery didn't seem to charge, so we're kind of wondering if the, uh, uh, it's a generator on this, not an alternator. If it's maybe not putting out too much or as much as it should be but he was thinking well maybe i'll just you know through the winter get a helicopter coming get a what you might call it uh 12 volt uh, alternator kit for it and uh put that on it what do we got little home belt guy sweet Looked like a bird kind of went woo. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna go clean up these plugs and then we'll get back here on the tripod and put them back in. Hopefully I haven't messed up the wires. It should be all right. I kind of laid them where they come out. And uh, see if she'll start again. It's been on charge for ooh, a couple hours now. So she might have enough poop. I don't know. We'll see. All right, those aren't looking too bad. They were a heck of a lot worse when I took them out. They almost look new. Pardon me, not quite, but there's a lot of crap stuffed down inside too yet I have to try to get out. Get down there with a little wire and fishing it out. Hopefully the gap's still good. Looks pretty good. Uh, they're fairly forgiving, I think. So, Anyways, let's uh, throw you on a tripod and we'll go throw these in and see if she'll start. Uh, I hope it does. <laughs> I don't know. We might have to scramble and get a new battery tomorrow. So the front plug here was the one that was leaking. Now, I don't know which one's which from which one's which now, but we'll, uh, he says one of these cylinders is needing rings, too, so that might be a winter job, too. We'll, uh, maybe, well, he'll probably do it without me there, but strip, strip the engine down and put new sleeves in it, new pistons, rings. That'll freshen up a little bit. A little bit more better. This one here looks like it's got a bit of oil in it too, so it's probably tired, you know. It's probably had a, a good run in life, no doubt. We uh, got her, of course, 13 hands later or something, I don't know. So we'll just give these a little snuggin. 13 sixteenths. Okay, so that one went there. And that one went there. And that one goes there. I think. There. And this one went here, I think. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right. Well, this thing's showing 75% here, but I'm going to try to start her up here. Let's see if she'll go. Right away if it...
he's got one of these uh, battery disconnect things here too with a key on it, which is kind of sweet. I thought maybe there was an issue with that, but I guess not. So that that is your key, but now you'll have, uh, so you gotta turn it to on there. Not basically, I don't know exactly how they work, but it turns the, the battery power on and off. So that should be on, so we should get a, there's that there. Now that shouldn't work. Yeah, I'm gonna actually leave that off like that tonight. Let this thing actually charge, charge. She's still flashing 75, so that's good. I think she'll be fine. I'll leave her overnight though, but uh, I said this was a new battery not too long ago, so. But leaving stuff hooked up shouldn't do that. You know, this was stored since July. They had it out on a tractor ride. A whole bunch of guys went out riding on their tractors. I couldn't make it. I can now with that. But anyways, um, he um, said it wasn't too bad then. But, you know, it sat July, August, September. That's almost three months. Should unhook that uh, the cables off it, I think. So sensor there temperature sensor that's the old four cylinders and then though just uh, in line four this actually has a little more power apparently bigger pistons I guess than the uh, the other nines so this is the golden jubilee doesn't actually say that anywhere on it which I kind of wish that would have been nice if it was embossed like golden golden jubilee or something here you know they should have done that but cost more money right so you get these stamped into it embossed into it and that's, that's about it that and the fenders uh, so that's pretty pretty uh, fancy fancy looking for for back then though, but yeah, so I don't really know a whole lot about this tractor um, Other than it's probably gonna need some top-end engine work soon and uh, Yeah, so should have checked this I guess too. He checked it when we were out there but, oh, Yeah, it should be fine I'm Supposed to check them cold of course so yeah, but um, four bladed fan and I didn't show you but when it's running It's actually pushing the air out Which I thought I'm like I said I asked him well, why does it do that? It's for when you're going through the field and the chaff doesn't get sucked into the radiator So you're driving through You know and it's blowing the air this way so the chaff from the Stuff in the wheat and stuff doesn't get sucked in there into the radiator. It actually blows it off now, I don't know why it wouldn't go into this way. Maybe it would, I don't know, but it actually blows forward. So you stand out front here when it's running and you're getting nice and warm. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty cool. So, but uh, yeah, good old tractor, this one. Uh, I'll probably maybe get some plowing on it tomorrow too, but I'm going to take my drone, do some drone work. And uh, I'm not sure what the sticks are, but maybe that's, I don't know. I didn't ask him that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take my drone, do some flying with the drone, and then maybe this camera too, and then uh, do some filming of the plowing and stuff as you know, best I can. It's kind of hard to, to film when you can't keep up to them, you know, but with the drone I can. If you only downfall the drone, there's no sound. And that kind of sucks. So, yeah, but I guess, I guess he's greased all this. Probably when he put it away, you grease the, all these so it doesn't rust, right? And the side landslides and stuff back here. This is all greased all up down here too, so it doesn't rust. Now the reason you've got to do that is if it's if you try to plow with a rusty one like mine, if you're in gravelly kind of sandy stuff, it will clean it and then it'll start working better. But what happens is if the ground is a little damp too, so the sod and stuff, you know, the top stuff, it'll stick to this and it won't roll off nice. It'll kind of all bung up in here and stuff and makes a big mess and this one especially because it all rolls up and starts bunging up and then hitting this one and you just get a big heap of crap in there until the tractor can't pull it anymore and then you got to kind of try to clean all that crap out of there so with that smooth it's going to be a little bit he might wipe this crap off with something but with that nice and smooth it'll roll off real nice it'll be pretty sweet so he'll probably just drive and jump in and away he goes <laughs> i would imagine so but uh, yeah she's an original ford Made in USA, model 10208. I guess that's the serial number there. II, is it maybe 86? I don't know, pretty sweet. But um, yeah, this one's been sitting on my trailer. Let's just jump down here for a second. Oh, it's been sitting on my trailer since we picked it up. And you know what, it really hasn't dripped anything, which is really good. 
for an old girl, you know, there's lots of areas where stuff could potentially leak. And geez, I only see a couple little spots. That's pretty good. I think that's actually really good for something that old. Man, if I was this old and not leaking, I think that's pretty freaking good. So yeah, sweet. Okay, so as well today, I'm just kind of working and getting some plates made up for mounting this stuff. Uh, I just went out and measured, I think a 10 by 10, 10 by 10 should be lots. So I'm just gonna mark, mark 10 by 10. This is actually the leftover piece from the piece I got for the bench here. <laughs> We're good. And we have to do another 10. That way it's gonna to be too short. I somewhere do have a oh crap. Somewhere I have a T square. Which will work absolutely perfect for that. Okay, took it back to the house. Uh no problem. No problem. I got a oh, framing square here that'll work just as well. T-square goal. I got a T-square somewhere. I know I do. But I think maybe I took it back up to the house. Um, okay. Unless it's underneath the table thing here. That's all right. This will work. Okay. Woo. So I'm not going to probably cut these today. Woo. Um, but basically what's going to happen is, luckily, on the bottom of the chicken pen, where I want to mount these things, there's the bottom cross piece, and another cross piece, so we'll have lots to screw these plates to the chicken pen, and then screw this oh, onto here, hopefully, there should be lots, depending on where I get her positioned. I'd like to get uh, maybe up like this along the top, where there is lots of spots to nail onto or whatever, but she's just not quite long enough to probably get, well it might, it might, it might work. We'll make her work. How about that, we'll make her work. So, yeah, there we go. That should work pretty good. So you might be asking, Wowie, why do you need such a big piece? Well, don't really, but it'll give me lots to put screws in two to attach this plate and uh, 10 inches is a nice round number. Eight's pretty good too, but I figured 10, you know, another two inches, a couple more screws, a couple more screws, and then uh, I think I'm thinking, depending on where this actually sits, I've just, whoa, Nelly putting in some of these lag bolts. I have to probably drill it a bit first and then drive those fellers in. May not have to drill those, probably should, but and then uh, some washers that should secure it to this and through into the uh, chicken pen subframe, we'll call it itself. So that should work. Um, so what is this gonna do? Um, basically, this is the end of the wood and then there's like a screen piece and the ground. We'll say this is the ground. So depending on where I want it to situate, so that'll sit there like that and then we'll just crank this down. basically and then lift the chicken pen back end the heavier end off the ground so she'll pick up off the ground and then uh, I'll be able to hook the little tractor to it on the front lift it up with a three-point hitch hopefully and uh, 
wheel this to like a new spot where they can get some fresh grass and stuff. Is the idea. So then these will just uh, hopefully just be high enough off the ground that you know they won't interrupt with anything when it's not being moved. And I won't actually have to flip them. I guess I could flip them if I wanted to, you know, flip them, flip the dewey around there. But uh, I think that should work pretty good. So uh, we're of course plowing tomorrow. So this probably won't get done until um, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe something like that. I have to get my little screw gun going, and uh, I'll probably just use a ratchet or something for these guys. There's only I don't know. Depends how many I want to fire into it. I guess there's lots of holes, so. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six to a, six to a plate should be lost to hold that on, hopefully. And uh, hopefully they get sunk into the wood real good, and uh, she should be good. Well, just uh, just heading her out soon here, and just looking at some of these trees here. Pretty nice. They're uh, really starting to change, so pretty soon, and probably well, some of them are still green yet, and they'll hold the leaves for a little bit, but the wind picks up. <laughs> You'll uh, maybe not see me for a couple of few, even a weekish, till I get all these things cleaned up again. I think I, I think I mentioned that, mentioned that before there. But uh, some of them are later too, you know. Like this one over here, you can see is it's really starting to go. She's really going, but uh, uh, some of them hang on to them. Like I was saying, they hang on for a little bit, you know, and then they start dropping. So it's a progressive thing. It takes me. Yeah, some, it, it all depends. Could be up to even two weeks until they're all down, you know? And then naked, crappy looking. <laughs> I hate winter. <laughs> winter socks. But uh, this one here is just kind of going, I don't know, drying up. But there is a lot down already, but I haven't got the, the stuff going yet, which probably should do this week too. Turn my trailer into vacuum trailer. Yeah, hey, look at that, eh? Fiery. Fiery nice. But yeah, there is still like a lot of green, right? So there's a lot still that have to have to change, but I'll tell you, it doesn't take long. It does not take long. Look at this one. Hoo-wee! And dropping quite a bit already too, you know, so still lots to come down though. Anywho, that's about her for today. Hopefully this crap here holds off tonight. <laughs> Doesn't get the ground all wet, because that'll kind of screw us for plowing tomorrow. <sighs> it rained pretty good yesterday, so and today hasn't really been uh, super, super sunny out at all. It's been like this all day. So very unsettled still, I guess. And uh, Hopefully we don't get more tonight because then it'll be no plowing tomorrow if we get rain tonight. Mm -hmm. Might be even too muddy-ish for, for tomorrow but uh, from the rain yesterday's but uh, oof. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I guess I will head her out for today. Make sure the truck's locked. Let that charge overnight. Hopefully she's good to go. But anywho, thanks again for watching, have a good night and stuff, and we'll catch you uh, tomorrow for plowing, hopefully, if the rain stays away. And uh, it's usually a fun day, and uh, I'll try to get some footage here on this camera, and then uh, some droning footage would be kind of sweet too. And uh, a nice open wide field, it should be able to stay on one end and fly on the other. Should be awesome. So yeah, but anyways, thanks again for watching. Oh, there's been a weird fish in the river here. It's a weird one. It's, it's maybe it's like six or so, seven inches long. Really skinny. But it's like a weird color. It's like a yellowy sort of brown color. I don't see him. He's, I see him earlier and he's up under the trees there, but I, I don't know where he is now. Weird color though. I didn't know what he was. And, you know, a little fish down there, you don't generally see their fins, but this guy had definitely some very definitive fins sticking out of him. It kind of looked sharky-ish, almost. It was kind of cool. But only six, seven inches long, maybe. Um, and not really fat, just skinny little guy, you know? Skinny, slendery guy, so... I don't know, fish. 
no idea. So, anyways, uh, thanks again for watching. Have a good night. And we'll catch you tomorrow, hopefully, if it doesn't rain again, for some plowing.